Hey guys, Brian here with Wolf's Prairie Outdoors. We're back again with another installment of our 336 budget brush gun series. We're going to be installing a rear Picatinny rail that has an integrated clover leaf sight that has green fiber optics, a dovetail filler for this buckhorn sight when we remove it, and a red fiber optic sight. We'll be removing the sight hood as well. I'm so glad to see that sight hood go. Before we get to installing, let's take a closer look at the rear Picatinny rail sight. So first off, you can see we've got the green fiber optics here. They're really going to aid in low light shooting. Additionally, on the inside of that, you can actually see the cloverleaf design that will help draw your eye towards the center of the ring. If you look at the bottom of the sight, you'll see there's a bump followed by a relief cut. That bump pushes the sight to one side so that when you run the windage screw in, it pushes the sight to the other side, allowing you to adjust it back and forth for windage. All right, guys, first up, we're going to install the Picatinny rail portion. This is by far the easiest portion to install. All we've got to do is remove these screws and then use the new screws to install it. They're supplied by Ranger Point. You'd want to use some thread locker on this for sure, but again, I'm not going to do that yet because I'm going to take the gun apart, clean it up and everything when I get done with this project, and I will do thread locker then. Also, get you a good set of hollow ground screwdrivers. makes the job a lot easier, and a less lot, you'll be a lot less prone to ruin any of the screws. So I'm going to go ahead and take these screws out. Now I'm going to switch bits. The screws supplied by Ranger Point have a bit larger head on them, so I want to make sure I get a good positive bite on that. And we will drop this bad boy into place. Get it lined up where it's going. And just lightly start those screws. You definitely don't want to strip this out. Take your time. I'm going to get each one started before I tighten anything down. I want to make sure I've got plenty of room to move it back and forth should I need to. Because you never know these days which holes are and aren't going to line up. It should all work in theory, but you never know. Looks like all these are going to be just fine. So I'm going to tighten this down. Next up, I'm going to have to remove the rear buckhorn sight to install the dovetail filler. And you're going to need a persuader, a punch that's non-marring of some kind. All right, I've got my armor block, my punch, and let's drive this bad boy out. Okay, that's it. All right, old buckhorn sight is out. I'm going to set that aside. Next up, I've got this little dovetail filler. The dovetail filler, as you can see here, is a very, very tiny piece of metal. It's flat on one side and rounded on the top to match the profile of your barrel. It will slide into this channel, and generally speaking, it's a very tight fit, and you'll have to sand it or file it down to make it go. Mine, as you can see, slides right in there. That's never happened to me before. That is amazing. I mean, it fits extremely well. I don't have any edges sticking out here that are gonna grab me. It's like it was made for it. Obviously, I've got a lock tied it in place. So I'll slide this out, and I'm going to show you guys what you'd have to do if this wouldn't fit like mine did. All right, so the easiest way to do this is either a file, which can take way too much material when you're doing this. So I suggest sandpaper, and I've got a piece of wet, dry, uh, 600 grit sandpaper. It's the same thing I use on the action. And then I will take a little drop of oil and drop that oil, just a dab. You don't need much. And then take your dovetail filler and just slowly and steadily remove material. It's not gonna be a quick process. This takes some time, but you want to take less material and keep having to fit it, then take more material and have to buy a new one. Cause then you gotta wait for shipping and right now with COVID, who knows how long it'll take to get to you. And now, if you look at the bottom, you'll see instead of it being all black, we're starting to get some shiny points. Those shiny points are where we are relieving the finish and starting to get into the metal. So that's the gist of how you do this. I'm not gonna remove any more material because I don't want it to be any looser than it already is. Before I install this part, I've gotta do some beating and banging on the front end to get the front sight to set in place. And I don't wanna have this sitting here wet, just waiting, so I will do that first, come back to this, and let it sit overnight and set up. So. Next up, I've got to remove the front sight. Well, I don't have to remove the front sight, but I'm going to remove the front sight so that I can fit it by hand, just sitting here as I file on the paper, and or as I sand on the paper, and 
That way I can test fit it just with a small piece instead of having to have the gun up here the whole time. So I'll go back and forth doing that. So first off, I've got to remove the sight hood, take the screw out, and then I will have the sight free. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna knock this sight hood off that I absolutely hate and say bye-bye to that. And then let's see how tight this sight is. Oh, well, look at that. That front sight is just loose as a goose. I literally just pulled that thing out of there. Nice work. <laughs> All right, so now I will go ahead and remove the front sight, or front sight base, I should say. The front sight has been removed. And now I'm going to get to work sanding. I've still got some oil on here from earlier. And I will start sanding. Okay, I'm starting to relieve some material. I know it's not gonna fit, but we'll just check it anyway. Nope, nowhere near. So I'm gonna keep sanding and I'll come back to you guys when I'm a lot closer. Well guys, as you can see, I have worked this sandpaper over. Yes, you can use heavier grit sandpaper or you could use a file, but I've seen in the past where people use a file and you get complacent going and instead of doing a nice circular motion, you go sideways a little too long and you will wear grooves right in the bottom of this all the way across. So then you have to go to sandpaper and really work it to get those grooves out and those grooves might be too deep. So I'll put in the time up front to get it right and just take a little more time sanding on a finer grit sandpaper to get it worked down nice and slow to where I need it instead of rushing it with a file or a heavy grit sandpaper and ruining the piece that I'm trying to save. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. And it gets tighter as you go. When you do this, oh, yeah, look at that, it's sliding right in nicely and I just gotta tap it over a little bit. I wanna get it to be a very close fit to getting it centered because if I, t I tap on this too hard, I could potentially strip the screw out and I don't wanna strip those threads because you've only got one screw holding this on. It's not like my 4570 that has two screws, a lot more secure fit. On this, I've only got a single screw and it's not a very long screw. So again, I don't want to risk stripping that out. All right, I'm gonna put the gun on the table so I can get a little bit better uh, hit here. And wow, that's in there. That is perfectly snug and I think that's gonna work out really well. It's nice and centered. So now, let's get this rifle set back up and we're gonna get the dovetail filler lock tight it in place okay guys pick your thread locker of choice here and the more secure the better because under recoil this is going to be moving around a bit and it's going to heat up a lot as the barrel heats up for now i'm going to use some blue thread locker Got a wee bit much on there, but I'll clean it up after I slide it in. Okay. And hold it in place. Wipe off that excess with my grease rag here. All right, guys, that's all there is to it. Really, it's not that difficult of an install. It's just taking your time when it comes to sanding these two dovetails. You wanna make sure that you do it properly. Take your time and don't take too much material because you cannot put it back and it's just a nightmare having to order new parts and it's a waste of money. And we work hard for our money, so we wanna put it to best use we can. So I think this is looking really good. I've got the green fiber optic on the rear, red fiber optic on the front. It's a really nice sight picture. I've got it on my 4570 now and it's just so easy to see at dark or dusk and uh, dawn. Really nice setup, fast sight acquisition. We'll take it out and do some shooting here soon and show you guys how this works. I'm really liking how this is coming together. And now I have the option for putting an optic on the rear. If I get to choose to go with a red dot or a low power variable, or I might take the two to seven off my 4570 for now and try that out and see how it works. I also have a Strike Eagle one to six power scope from Vortex I can put on here. And I have an extra red dot laying around as well I might try. So might go through all the options and see what I like best. I'm really, really liking how this is coming out. If you guys want any details for anything you see on this rifle, check the episode notes linked below. It'll take you to a link for everything on this rifle. And 
give you more details on everything else as well. Also, I had some questions in the last video I forgot to mention. We did a poll on Instagram asking about the buttstock and what we should do with it because I wasn't really fond of the light colored wood. So this actually came off my 4570 since the 4570 now sports a black stock. And I think this pepper laminate that was on the 4570 SBL really fits the look of this rifle a lot better. It's just a darker tone. I think it's a good look for it. And if I end up Cerakoting, I may end up going something a little closer to this instead of just a black. Just change it up a little bit. Who knows? We'll see what happens. That'll be down the road, of course. For now, it's going to run it just like it is. And like I said, put an optic on it. So that's all there is to it, guys. I really hope you're enjoying this build series. We are pretty much done. Got to do a safety delete yet and maybe one or two other things. And that'll be it. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you do, give us a big thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button below and check back often. Have a good one, guys.